So my name is uh, Eric Olwot and um, I've been working with education for the better part of the last uh, 15 years. And one of the things I do is I work for the Bergen International Film Festival, where I've worked with uh, a lot of different things, but I've also worked with the educational bit of it. And um, in 2010, we got this beautiful little 56 minute long film made by an uh, uh, American director called Chris Farina uh, that is called World Peace and Other Fourth Grade Achievements. <laughs> Still to this date, one of my favorite film titles. Um, I could explain you, I'd walk you through the entire film, but I don't think I'd do it justice. So I'm going to show you a three minute trailer for the film and then I'll talk a little bit about what we did with this game afterwards. Yes, woo. <laughs> so, whoop. <laughs> Thank you for uh, excellent technical assistance, my man. Relationships are important in education. That really maybe even the key to teaching well is the relationship you have with a student. If you're able to touch their mind, fine, but if you can touch their heart, then the mind contact lasts longer and goes deeper, I think. Welcome to the World Peace Game. I'm very, very sorry, but you're going to have to have fun today. This is the World Peace Game, and it's about 28 years old. It's a political science simulation. And the game basically pits four or five countries against each other in every way, politically, socially, militarily, and economically. And they have to use their imagination, use their thinking skills to think their way out of these problems that they're pitched into head first. It's a game that makes you think really hard, makes you really think about what's really going on in the world. What I think is you can't be all about war and you can't be, again, this may sound bad, but you can't be all about peace. Yeah, not like all like flowers and grassy fields and uh, your solar arcs. panels. <laughs> They threaten you, Ms. Williams, and your cabinet to destroy the refinery complex if they are challenged. I want it to be so thrilling that they don't want to do without it, but so challenging that they almost can't do it. That kind of tension is where learning occurs. They have that love and fear, and that learning just torques on that kind of mismatch. There has to be a way we can use this. We have to figure that out. We can use this volcano, use this eruption to make something good happen. If you look on the World Peace Cave map, it has like that much oil. So does Caden. And Caden's our complete ally. Yes. I don't want to be a rebel. If she doesn't want to, we can make a treaty. I hope that they take away every creative thinking tool, every critical thinking tool they can, and they have a confidence that they can solve any problem. They can deal with anything. As I said to them today, if just one of you is in position to leverage something good for the world, you may save us all. And that's what I'm naively hoping it might happen. So, uh, oh yeah, actually, yeah. Mm, Magna, you wanna, you wanna do I your magic do again? You can, you can do it. <laughs> I'll let Magna do his, his magic. Um, but, uh, first of all, uh, uh, go and see the film. Uh, big surprise though, we've set up the game uh, in the library, and uh, uh, if you want to, we can go and play it after the talks. Who wants to go and play the game? <laughs> so I'm a dirty old liar, we don't have the game here, but your reaction is pretty much the reaction I had after seeing this film. Um, <laughs> <coughs> which is why I sat down immediately and wrote like a two-page email to, to John, and then right at the end I, I slipped in this small paragraph where I said, um, 
do you think uh, it would provide like any kind of extra benefit for the people, yeah, me, uh, if we had a version of the game actually in Bergen? And then John, obviously being a seasoned teacher, uh, uh, responded very, uh, uh, very eloquently and said, uh, well, you know, Eric, I'm wrestling philosophically with that very question. As I do not know if it is either possible or ultimately necessary. The game itself is so large, it has a thousand or thousands of pieces, and it takes at least five hours to set up. The manual alone takes three hours to share and explain. So I think it's not a practical reality to bring it to Bergen. So um, he was obviously um, 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 truthful about the game being pretty big. It's a four foot by four foot by four foot construction. But um, still, I was uh, intrigued. And I had the same feeling you guys had. So we sat together as a group, and um, uh, we figured out a way to, to find funding to bring John over to Bergen. Um, and we wanted to test out a couple of hypotheses. I had this idea, oh yeah, this is a picture from our run, as you can understand, we did manage to secure the funds and we did have John come over to Bergen, but we wanted to test the hypothesis of does this game travel, does this LARP, if you will, travel from a US context to a Norwegian context. But I wasn't merely interested in uh, the age group of 10, because I mainly work with adults, uh, so we wanted to test both if it travels geographically, if it travels in age, and ultimately if it travels in size. Can you make like the mega world peace game <laughs> with uh, what my dream is still with 400 participants? Uh, we've gotten to 60, but uh, it had some challenges. Obviously, building the game in itself is actually the easiest bit. This is uh, in a workshop in Bergen where we built our own plexiglass construction and here you can see this is the sort of creativity. It might not seem as much for you guys, but this actually takes a lot of uh, or provides a lot of stability to the game board. It's otherwise it's a game board that literally moves like this <laughs> all over the stage and uh, that's one of the reasons John has uh, institutionalized the fine for touching the board. Um, we managed to uh, shape that up a little bit, and we're pretty happy about that. So John came over. Uh, these are uh, the people I work with, and uh, we set up the game. And here you can see a small sample of the thousands of pieces that he has uh, accrued over the years. And here you see the game board <laughs> coming into fruition uh, uh, at our playing uh, uh, facilities. And this is about 30 minutes before we let the players in. And I still like this photo so much. It's like the quiet before the storm. <laughs> now, as I said, we also wanted to test age. I also love this photo. In this photo, you see a teenager, a 20-year-old, a 30-year-old, a 40-year-old, all being uh, uh, marshaled to pay attention to what's going on by a 60-year-old. Um, and as you can see, there is no difference in the way they uh, pay attention to what's going on in the game. However, we did have to ask the fundamental question, does it engage? That's what we wanted to find out when we invited John over to see if, see if it's possible to bring this uh, to, to Norway. And uh, the answer is a resounding yes, but. Geographically speaking, um, it does add complexity uh, when, uh, and playable issues when you include a lot of nationalities. We had nine nationalities playing the game uh, with adults uh, uh, for the first time. But also, it made it painfully clear that language is a huge barrier, uh, both for negotiation and playfulness and uh, uh, sort of the participatory, uh, participatory uh, elements of this game. Um, and uh, in this August, when we had the, the last run of, uh, of the game in Bergen, we were actively discussing whether or not to uh, translate the game into Norwegian or not. Uh, ultimately, an English teacher said, well, I think I could have good use of the documents being in English, but the negotiations being in Norwegian. So we sort of found a, a compromise, uh, taking it the best of both worlds. Um, 
we also um, found that age has nothing to say with the playfulness of the game. This, uh, these are uh, United Nations representatives studying the board to find out whether they should uh, declare a conflict uh, resolved or not. Um, and as you can see here, there is no shortage of uh, uh, the childhood stance of teacher, teacher, I want the attention uh, among the cabinet members uh, uh, discussing different things. And I think here is a foreign uh, secretary and a defense minister vying for the uh, attention from the prime minister of uh, Subsistan, which was the poorest country in the, uh, in the game. However, and this I found really interesting, the older people uh, got, the more seriously they take the game. <laughs> and we had in-game conflicts that spilt over into real life. Which is interesting. I mean, uh, uh, as LARPers, you're uh, probably, uh, most of you are familiar with the bleed in and bleed out concepts, but for a sort of un uneducated or unLARPy uh, audience, that was a, a, a novel experience, and we had to go a couple of rounds with that. And it's been a recurring thing that when we've done it for high school students and, and uh, 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 teenagers, that we have to negotiate the sort of the in-game, real-life uh, uh, consequences of things, which is incidentally is something John hasn't really had to deal with with uh, uh, younger kids. Um, finally, <laughs> I put this game uh, or this picture in just to show you with the same sort of interaction with the game board uh, that we had, but also really to talk about size. Uh, I put this in because they are so much bigger than the kids. Uh, but we also did the multiplication of, of participants. We, uh, this, this year we added 30 participants and 30 roles to the already existing 30 roles. And you'd think that would be double the workload, but it turns out that's not true, it's exponential. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, many of you are probably familiar with this uh, kind of uh, uh, trying, failing, and tweaking, which we have done a whole lot with. Uh, that's basically the essence of uh, what we've been doing um, these past six years. Now, that's not, uh, nothing new, but what I want to do to inter because Jok was pressing me earlier today on what are the implications for the LARP world with what you're doing with a, a world peace game? And uh, I sort of failed to answer that question before coming to Oslo, but then I've been thinking about it for the last couple of hours, and I think maybe this guy is probably the consequence I'd like to highlight. This is Jens Nurgren Svensson. He played in the adult game, but he is 10 years old. The reason why we allowed him to play in the adult game is that incidentally, he'd been at the summer, uh, summer camp of John Hunter two weeks prior to us playing the adult, uh, adult game. So he came fresh out of a world peace victory, came to Bergen, realized John was also in Bergen, and was incredibly enthusiastic, and made his dad call me and said, we want to play this game. And I was like, man, that's, oh. Turns out, this is a very good news chief. And also, uh, the vessel for playing the game uh, more often in Bergen, because, hang on, let's see. He's been instru instrumental in the TOT, the training of trainers, or in his case, the training of teachers. Uh, because he went to his teacher uh, at the, what's it, Ungdom uh, School, a youth school, middle high, middle school, is that middle school for uh, yeah, junior high? And he said, I have this game and I want to play it. Uh, and I want to play it with you uh, and, and my, my classmates. So this is the passing of the torch. Here you see Jans, this is in, uh, in August. He's now, I think, 15 years old. Uh, so time has passed. But he is in this game playing the dual role of the weather god <laughs> and the instructor. And to me, this scene is magic. The question I've been 
searching for but didn't realize I was searching for when I, when I invited John to come over uh, to Norway was how do you pass the torch? How can I, how can you guys be the new John Hunter? How can we reinvent the world peace game to fit our kind of teaching, our kind of interaction with kids, adults, with the, uh, with the LARP world at large? And I think it's magical that he has four adults listening to his experiences, uh, giving them guidance in how to run, how to solve conflicts, how to interpret things. And to me, this is literally the, uh, uh, the, the closing of the circle. And in fact, Jens is going to talk at the TEDx about this in about a week's time in Trondheim, uh, which is uh, awesome, uh, I think, because uh, he's learned so, lo uh, such a so much from both playing the game and now running the game. So, if my takeaway is, uh, should be sum summarized into one sentence, it would be this. Trust your participants, trust your students to become your teachers.